are here to celebrate Juneteenth. Let's give it up for Juneteenth. Freedom Day, Emancipation Day. My name is Lovely Hoffman. I am a teacher at the Edison K through eight. I am joined with my amazing colleague, Maria Dereste. And we have brought some students here to perform for the flag raising celebration. We're gonna start off, kick things off with our djembe performers. These djembes are a West African tradition and they're played in various countries. You can see the beautiful kente patterns. And what better way to start off Juneteenth than to start with the African drums? All right, here we go. In the African tradition, we want to welcome you by singing a song called Funga Alafia. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Here we say, Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Ashe 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 Ashe. for you. These are Zimbabwean style marimbas. Thank you.
Let's give it up. Can you all give them a round of applause? Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Can y'all give them a round of, come on, y'all. Come on, a little louder than that. Let's celebrate. All right. I'm waiting. Thank you. All right, well, good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Good afternoon. Wonderful. My name is Lori Nelson. I am the Senior Advisor for Racial Justice and Co-Chair of the Black Employee Network. I am here with my wonderful co-chair, Chiron Owens, and we will walk you through this wonderful program that celebrates Juneteenth. You want to say something? Happy Juneteenth, everybody. Y'all could do better than that. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, we're going to get this started without further ado. Um, and so the first person that we're going to bring up is going to be uh, Portia, who's going to um, do a piece for us um, and a little bit about her. She's a native of Chicago, uh, but based in Boston. She's a poet, a performer, an educator, and a curator. Uh, she utilizes Afrofuturism and surrealism to explore issues in the black women and queer diasporas. Her achievements include individual World Poetry Slam champion, the founder of the Roxbury Poetry Festival, 2019 Highmark Artist in Residence at Brown University, 2021 Artist in Residence at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, 2020 Poet Laureate Fellow with the Academy of American Poets. Her education is um, MFA in uh, poetry from Emerson College author of I Shimmer Sometimes Too. Current role, she's the Poet Laureate for the City of Boston. And her publications uh, featured in the Tri-Quarterly Magazine, Black Warrior Review, the Boston Globe, Essence Magazine, Redivider, the Academy of the American Poets, Netflix, Wildness Press, the Museum of Fine Arts, and more. All right, and without further ado, Portia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How are y'all? I am so excited and honored to be here as we get ready to raise the flag for Juneteenth. Make some noise for that, y'all. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. This poem is about um, the first four slave ships built in this country. And the title of the poem is... I cannot wade through the past without waking the dead. I cannot weigh wailing, summoning the history as the present of this country is homing the hunting, honing the house, the clang of cuffs, calling chains a lineage. The power of the tongue is the difference between the old world and the new, a savage and savagery, a colonist and killer. Manifest destiny is the law of attraction, is conjuring under a different guise. Language is a spell, wish and curse. Declare independence and the war ensues. Declare the land your country and the soil gaseous crimson. Declare a human as slave and no one ask how bright the color clipping her universe is. History is a complex wordsmith. The first slave ships forged in this country were named Desire, Prosperity, Fortune, and Hope. Desire was built on a summer lawn in Salem and set sail in 1637. The ship, a vessel, a belly, a black hole sold indigenous folks to the Caribbean in exchange for Africans to slave the colonies. A body for a body, a life for a lie, cargo to carcass, desire from the Latin desidero, meaning 
to wish to obtain, to long for, to lust after what one loathes, learn one man can claim desire and conquer all another man desires. One can lust after another once and the thirst is forever in drought. America, named sake after a conqueror, calls a slave ship hope and it becomes a blueprint for the future. Calls a boat a fortune, and all aboard become possessed possessions. History has a way of repeating, or history is self is repeating, or history is a reaping. Ghost gunshot locking us in the open field of an eye. The bodies police to pavement. The ballot exchange for bullet. Plantation for prison. Death for life lie and lingo. What you damn damns you. The conquer America labels us and we reshape it endearing. Names us a ghetto and we craft culture. Label us your desire and we say from the Latin phrase decidus, meaning from the stars, as in emerging from the black hole of a ship's bows, as in them folks came from a dark, dark galaxy, as in them folks a heavenly body, celestial beings shafted, shackled constellations, night skying the world. Thank you so much. Happy Juneteenth, folks. Okay, thank you so much again, Portia. Um, and so now we're gonna have uh, Mayor Michelle Wu come up and she's gonna say her remarks and read our proclamation. My apologies, I'm getting, I'm getting directed that we're actually gonna do the national anthem first, black national anthem first by Miss Lovely Hoffman and then we'll have the mayor, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And now we will hear from our amazing mayor, Mayor Michelle Wu. Thank you, Karen. Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out um, and thank you for that 
beautiful, beautiful rendition of the national anthem. I want to start with a big shout out of gratitude to Miss Lori Nelson and Mr. Chiron Owens, who are the co-chairs of Ben. Uh, and who have been working to put this together, but also to make sure that the work that we do in City Hall reflects our workforce, reflects our communities, to make Boston a home for everyone. So thank you for your leadership every single day alongside the entire Black Employee Network. Um, also, thank you to our uh, incredible Poet Laureate. We are so grateful and thankful to have Portia Olaiwola as the representative and the voice of the City of Boston, who always brings the words of our soul out into the world. Uh, thanks to the fourth graders as well for, for an incredible performance and to all of our artists and performers who are here sharing their, their talents. Um, and okay, I, I could, I just, there's so many amazing people here. Thank you to Dr. Trent, who is gonna speak in a moment as well uh, for the work at the Museum of African American History and in terms of Boston really being the holder of so much of, of the legacy of the history and um, wanting to make sure that we tell the full history that our city and our country have, have experienced. Juneteenth is a story about freedom but it's also a story about action. Uh, it's one that reminds us that for freedom to truly exist, it's not enough to be named. It must be lived. And especially for those of us in public service, it's a reminder that our work isn't done until freedom is lived by every member of our communities. I want to thank my fellow elected officials for being here, who fight for that every day here in City Hall and at the State House. They're going to speak shortly, but um, just going down the line, I want to recognize City Councilor Ben Weber, City Council President Ruthie louis uh, State Rep Russell Holmes, City Councilor Tanya Fernandez anderson State Rep Brandy Fluker-Oakley, City Councilor Aaron Murphy, City Councilor Gigi Coletta's uh, City Councilor Sharon Durkin, and State Representative Bill McGregor. Thanks for being here. In just a couple of weeks, Boston is going to be celebrating the 4th of July, the day that we declared our freedom and independence from British rule. But that we didn't include everyone. That freedom wasn't full. Many of us know that the Emancipation Proclamation declared that enslaved people shall be, quote, forever free. But that document also says and makes it clear that that's not enough, that initial declaration. In fact, it orders that in addition to recognizing that freedom, the government and the military must also maintain those freedoms. That is a powerful mandate and so important that it appears twice in the Emancipation Proclamation. Here at the city, we take those words to heart in acknowledging that freedom, Joy, equity, health, wealth, opportunity isn't something that you can just declare once and expect it to take root. Our freedom must be tended to, nurtured, enacted, and defended, and maintained. And so I'm so proud to say that at the, at the city, under the leadership of Lori Nelson and the coalition of community members working together to close the racial wealth gap, address Boston's historical involvement in the transatlantic slave trade, end racial disparities in health outcomes, especially maternal health, and build a city where freedom is a reality for every one of our residents, we are trying to do that every day, and it's, it's all hands on deck. We talk about freedom as yes, freedom from harm, from injustice, from hate, from poverty, but also, and more importantly, freedom to learn at the best schools, freedom to live in safe, beautiful, affordable homes, to love who we choose, to work at fulfilling, well-paying jobs, and to have access to the resources and opportunities that our families need to thrive. True freedom is expansive and affirmative. And as the cradle of liberty, Boston doesn't just recognize that freedom, we are determined to maintain it. The flag that we are about to raise is as American as the one with 13 stripes and 50 stars. It is red, white, and blue, and it has one star surrounded by its glow, representing the freedom at the core of our democracy, a freedom that radiates outward and reminds us all of our individual responsibility and our collective duty to tend to its flame. 
So I want to thank you all for being part of this celebration today and for helping us keep the flame of freedom burning bright here in Boston. Happy Juneteenth to all. Okay, the team is reminded, my, <laughs> the only thing I was actually supposed to do, instead of talking a lot, was uh, to issue the official city proclamation on behalf of all of our elected officials gathered here, declaring uh, National Juneteenth Day in the city of Boston. Um, I won't read through all of the different pieces because we have a lot of speakers, but uh, we are raising the Juneteenth flag on City Hall Plaza in place of the City of Boston flag to commemorate this very important day across the entire city. Thank you, thank you. Um, and just real quick, I want to take time to also acknowledge our Ben leadership members. So if you're a Ben leadership member, can you please come up? Taisha, I see you over there. Carlita, I see you over there. Ricky, I see you right here. Lorna, I see you right here to my left. Darius, come on up, y'all, because without them, this would not be possible. So obviously, as the chairs, me and Lori get a lot of attention, but it's really our team that is the reason why we're able to make this happen. So please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Did you want to say something? Yeah. yeah. And so now, without further ado, we're going to bring up our keynote speaker. And then to introduce you to her, we have my co-chair, Lori Nelson. Is everyone all right? Yes? OK. Very quickly, I had the pleasure of meeting this wonderful leader, uh, a true advocate for the preservation of history, the history, our culture, and our people maybe around a year ago when she came in, uh, ready to move forward with the Museum of African American History. Dr. Noelle Trent is noted not only in this city, but across the nation for her work relative to preservation of history, for her work relative to uh, celebrating and honoring what we know as black culture, black experience. And she comes with a wealth of knowledge coming from the southern, southern states and coming up here to do the work of continuing to lift up the Museum of African American History. Because it's Juneteenth, we felt that it was fitting and right for someone like a Dr. Trent to come and, and really educate us briefly, but educate us on the why why Juneteenth matters, why we celebrate this day, and how we should all come together and continue to celebrate our people, our culture, and of course, the history that's right here on Beacon Hill in the museum. So if you all would join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Noelle Trent. Thank you, Thank you Lori, the Black Employees Network, for putting together such a wonderful program. To our young musicians who performed earlier, thank you for that wonderful uh, presentation. Music is not my gift in that capacity, so I greatly admire you. Uh, and to Mayor Wu, who was the first person to welcome me to Boston when I found out I got the job. I really appreciate that warm welcome, and it set the tone for how I was welcomed here into the city. And to our various other elected officials, I appreciate all of you. It is an honor to be here this afternoon. Uh, this year marks my second Juneteenth in Boston, or what I'm calling my return to Boston. I was born here and then left because my parents took me somewhere else, but I'm back, and so it's great to be here. Juneteenth is a special day, and it's a day with depth and meaning. Historically, Juneteenth marks the day, June 19th, 1865, when General Gordon Granger, like so many other Union generals, read the Emancipation Proclamation to enslaved people in Galveston, Texas, reading that on the first day of January in the lead year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then thenceforward and forever free. 
and the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority, therefore will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they make for their actual freedom. In that moment, enslaved people were declared free. But that declaration didn't mean that they didn't have to work for it. And I think President Lincoln understood that in saying, in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. Now, many people mark this day as the end of enslavement in the United States. And in Texas and in the Southwest, June 19th, later Juneteenth, became an annual holiday celebrating that landmark moment. Our modern Juneteenth is more complex. The Juneteenth we celebrate today is about more than June 19th, 1865. Rather, it is a national moment to pause and celebrate the collective emancipation days, whether April 16th in DC, May 20th in parts of the Southeast, August 8th, or a myriad of other dates. We should also open up our understanding of this moment to consider the personal emancipation holidays for those freedom seekers who self-emancipated, meaning those people who took it upon themselves to pray with their feet like Frederick Douglass did and run away from a system of oppression and did work like Harriet Tubman and go back and bring more people with them. It is a day of jubilation, far beyond our 21st century understanding. Now just imagine a joy that erupts from the bottom of your feet, coming up through your soul and out through every pore of your being. This is a day that's bigger than the Bruins and the Patriots winning their championships, and it will be bigger then the celebration that will happen later this week when the Celtics win. Oh, I don't know if y'all are enthusiastic enough. It is bigger than that. Holidays like Juneteenth are important because they are a time when we stop and set a day apart from our daily rigor. You see, we may never have a true understanding of the joy of that moment, but we celebrate it to acknowledge it. It was a day that marked profound change. A change that was later enforced by the 13th Amendment that ended slavery in the United States, by the 14th Amendment that provided citizenship for all natural born citizens, something that is still happening today, and the 15th Amendment which granted suffrage or voting rights. It is a day that exists as a direct contradiction to the profound trauma and sorrow of slavery. So in celebrating this day of joy, we are also acknowledging the sorrowful legacy of slavery. Now in all of this, our work is not done. You see, when Ben Hates created the Juneteenth flag here in Roxbury, he was not creating it just for the present, but for future generations. So when future generations sit under this flag, what are we doing to ensure that they understand the fullness of this moment? Or as Coretta Scott King stated, that freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. The answer to that question is complex. It, it goes from policy to the personal, for the digital environment to the built environment, from STEM to arts to history. It is more than finance and acknowledgement, but a deliberate, direct incorporation and inclusion. It is not the responsibility of one, but of all. We all have a role to play. At the Museum of African American History and Culture History, we preserve buildings that witnessed this history. We tell the history and share the relevance and work to expand our outreach. 156 years 
after the Juneteenth generation, let us be thoughtful in our work. Let us remember that the light and joy of Juneteenth cannot exist without the darkness of slavery. Let us not forget as we celebrate this week why this day exists and preserve that story for future generations. Happy Juneteenth. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and so now what we want to do is we want to bring up uh, our city council president, uh, Ruthsi Lujan. Thank you, Chiron. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. I am Ruti Luijan, president of the Boston City Council and at-large city councilor, and I just want to thank Mayor Wu for this flag raising, and I want to thank the incredible work of Lori Nelson and Chiron Owens for the Black Employee Network and Carlita uh, Chambers Walker for all the work that they do for our black employees here in the city of Boston. So clap it up for yourselves. Um, I am really glad to be here, to be celebrating uh, Juneteenth, to be thankful to the ancestors who made it a point to celebrate Juneteenth in backyard cookouts at churches before this was a formal holiday recognized by, formally by this government. And shout out to Opal Lee, who led this movement at the federal level. African Americans were having the celebration, learning of their freedom. And so I want to, I stand on the shoulder of giants here as a black woman in politics, as a third black woman to serve as uh, the president of the Boston City Council, but also to say, Thank you to the African-American community that has endured and continues to endure, on whose shoulders we stand. There's a line in the Black National Anthem that says, keep us forever in the path. And what does it mean? What is the path? The path is the work of continuing to fight for racial justice, continuing to make sure that we are doing the work of repair, repairing past harm. And that work is not easy, especially as we see the attacks on any attempt to push us forward on issues of diversity, on issues of equity and inclusion. But we ask to stay forever in the path because of those who came before us and because of those who demand us to continue to fight. So I ask that we all stay forever in the path, whatever that looks like for you, whether you are an artist, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you are a politician, that you use your talents to keep us in the path of equity, of justice, and that we continue the work towards liberation because we celebrate today and we do the work tomorrow. Thank you. I have the pleasure of calling up um, my uh, colleague at the state level, uh, State Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley, but I also want to say thank you to all of my colleagues who are here again, uh, Councillor Ed Flynn, uh, Representative McGregor, Councillor Durkin, Councillor Coletta, Councillor Murphy, our great uh, Noel Trent leader of the um, African American Museum of History, uh, Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson from Roxbury, obviously the birthplace uh, where Black Boston resides, and there's going to be a lot of events. I see Jumata Smith out here on Wednesday. There's going to be the annual parade and flag raising, so make sure that you join the Councillor Fernandez Fernand Anderson and Jumata Smith for that. Uh, Rep. Uh, Rep. Russell Holmes, Councillor Weber, and now I'll call up Rep. Brandy Fluga Oakley. I'm sorry. And, okay. Chris yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Also want to acknowledge Representative Christopher Worrell, who just joined us, and also Senator Linda Dorsina Forey, who I see in the audience. Thank you for all your service and being one of the ancestors from which we are able to carry the tribute. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Brandi Fluker Oakley. I'm the state representative for the 12th Suffolk. That's parts of Mattapan, Dorchester, Hyde Park, and the town of Milton, the blackest district in the entire Commonwealth. Proudly representing that. I'm also a Mattapan native and a homeowner there, so happy to be where my ancestors first came. I want to thank the city and the Black Employee Network for putting on this Juneteenth event. I want to just take a moment because as someone who's descendant from slaves who were brought here to American ports and toiled the land, we don't half step anything. And I want to give you all the full articulation of the meaning of the flag. So you'll notice that the colors are red, white, and blue. And you'll notice that our wonderful keynote speaker, Dr. Trent, named how we have the 14th Amendment. The reason why we had to enact the 14th Amendment is because when the slaves were free, they tried to say that we weren't American. That's why this flag is red, white, and blue to symbolize that black Americans are in fact American, despite how they tried to deny us all of our rights. 
The other thing that you'll notice in the flag is it's not a straight line that connects the red and the blue, but it's actually an arc. And that's to symbolize what's on the horizon and what's possible for black Americans after being freed in this nation. The other thing you'll notice about the flag that's important to note is the big star that's in the middle. That has two meanings. First, Juneteenth is celebrated, and Dr. Trent named many other dates because there were several other places that too learned of their freedom late, but Galveston, Texas learned about it last, which is why we celebrate this date of June 19th. It has that big white star in the middle to represent the Lone Star State of Texas. I know we got some Texans in the audience, so that is a tribute to the state of Texas, but also symbolizes all 50 states to show that black Americans are free in all 50 states. And that bursting um, arc that's around that is also to celebrate the possibility and the joy of what we'll have to contribute. I have a shirt that I'll be wearing at a later Juneteenth event this week that says, Dear Ancestors, I Understand the Assignment. And that is the charge that I give to every single one of you who are here today, whether you um, are descendant of black Americans here in the U.S., whether your people migrated to the U.S. to start a better life, whether you're an ally in the movement, understand the assignment. This holiday is great. We celebrate it. But this holiday is not the work. The work is where are we on equity with home ownership? Where are we on salary and wages? Where are we on our criminal justice system to make sure that we're not having a disproportionate representation, recognizing we're the minority of the population? That's the work. So we're going to two-step. We're going to enjoy the music. We're going to enjoy the food. But then we need to start the work. So thank you for this celebration, and thank you for the flag raising. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of the electeds that are here. Unfortunately, we don't have the time frame to hear from you all, but we appreciate your presence um, and your commitment to this work. So the next thing, <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have the steppers from the Edison K-8 school come up and do a one final performance before we have the uh, flag raising. Thank you so much.
Suena chido, y tú di que es que primo es loca, ven pa' acá y abre la boca, que como tú quedan pocas, no digas nada que hoy se choca. Tu pita, sí que sí, dame cinturita, sí que sí, dame cinturita, sí, 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 dame cinturita. Ay, 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 Lupita, sí que sí, dame cinturita, sí que sí, dame cinturita, sí, 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 dame cinturita. Ay, 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 Lupita. All right, great job. Can we give it up one more time for our steppers from the Edison? All right, all right. So now we're rounding out the program, um, but I just wanted to go over a few things before we, before we um, go to the flag raising portion of this. So as soon as we um, finish raising the flag, we did want to do a group photo, and then we're going to transition everyone inside. Um, they're seating on the mezzanine and in the courtyard where you'll be able to eat and enjoy some good food and network with each other. We are going to feed the children first, okay? So the children will eat first um, and our seniors, okay? Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to bring up Lori so we can begin the flag raising. So again, thank you everyone for coming out. This is the moment where we will be raising the flag. Uh, if all of our elected officials would please come forward, we're going to begin the flag raising. We also want to also acknowledge, I'm missing, where'd she go? Where'd she go? Is Jumada still here? Where's Jumada? Jumada's over there. Where is she? She's right over there. She, 
she's Miss Jumada. I apologize, Miss Jumada. She's somewhere. Oh, I didn't even see you, Miss Jumada. If you would come up, please. We are excited to have uh, not only some of our community voices and some who have been legacy in this work, like Ms. Jumata and her family and Ms. Antonia Edwards, who has done the work of reparations. They will be joining as we begin the flag raising. And so I believe we can start this. I'm looking at Chiron. Ms. Mm -hmm. Jumata, you are first. I, I'm holding your stuff. I got you. I got you. Thank you so much. All right, everyone will take a turn. All right, Sister Jamada. All right, now. Take us on the right path. That's it. That's it. And thank you, Miss Antonia Edwards. Thank you so much. And now if our elected officials will keep going to raise the flag. Mm -hmm. Can I say that I was help um, make state Texas uh, the state for state? Okay. And also openly in All right, let us all give a round of applause. Thank you for coming out. Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Thank you so much.